What the f- You guys have been begging me to make this video for ages. I've been very busy since the last devlog, as I've also hosted a game jam and made a whole game with MangoDev while making this video. Thank you so much for almost 20,000 subscribers. Our community is growing very fast thanks to you guys. A lot more progress has been made since the last devlog, so let's get straight into it. Almost immediately after I posted devlog 3, a few people suggested that I make the leveling up GUI smaller and less obvious at the top of the screen. This literally took me a couple of minutes to do. All I did was make the GUI scale smaller, then I changed the code to make it tween to the top of the screen instead of in the middle. Here's what it looks like now. Just so you know, the game isn't third person, this is just for testing and showing you guys. As you can see, a couple of you suggested that I add a view bob. This is where the camera bobs up and down to mimic real life walking. This was a great idea and will make a big difference to the game's movement. I hopped on Desmos to play around with waves and eventually made one that would fit the game. After about 5 minutes of scripting, I made the bobbing effect which was surprisingly easy to do. After that, I made the camera tilt when the player looks left or right. Here's the result in game. Now that that's done, here's a quick 2 minutes from this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Every great game has some fun yet difficult challenges waiting near the end. Challenges that you can really dig your teeth into if you want to master them. Well in Raid Shadow Legends, that ending is the Doom Tower, and it will blow your mind. This huge tower is basically a giant prison. The Arbiter fought a pack of evil guys a long time ago, but she wasn't strong enough to take them out for good. So instead, she locked them up in a massive super tower until she figured out how to deal with them. To climb to the top, you're going to need an army of champions. The Doom Tower bosses are really tough and you need some serious specialists if you're going to beat them. Lots of Doom Tower bosses ignore block debuffs and they can do real nasty stuff to your champions. And this month, Raids just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you're good enough to take down the Iron Twins, you'll see a huge payoff, being able to awaken your champions. But wait, here's the big news. Raid has just released a super powered legendary version of everybody's favourite champion, Death Knight. The whole Raid community has been waiting for this for a long time. He's strong, he's powerful, he's perfect, and the best part is, everyone can get him for free just by logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th, and you'll add Ultimate Death Knight to your collection. Easy. There's seriously never been a better time to get started, but there's more. You can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level your new strongest champion all the way to level 50. This promo code is available for both new and existing players. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan this QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30 and that's a bargain. We're talking about a free epic champion, Virgis. 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. At this point, I decided to finally fix something that has been bothering me since I first started making the game. This was small ledges. As you can see here, the character really struggles to walk over ledges and gets stuck. Since there are no Roblox tutorials on how to fix this, I ended up having to watch a Unity tutorial and translated it over to Roblox. <sighs> After a ton of hours fixing errors and changing some physics, it worked perfectly. Here's the result. If you watched Devlog 1, which you should have, then you may remember that there were four good Class D models. I decided that now was the best time to add them to the game, so I needed to make a character selection system. Firstly, I imported the three other characters into Mixmo to rig them. After that, I imported them into Roblox. They look very cool. By the way, this took me an hour to do. After that, I needed to add some more things to the start screen GUI, so I added a change character button and a frame that displays the character that you're about to play as in a viewport frame. After some coding magic, I made the character selection GUI in a scrolling frame so I can easily add more characters in the future. This is great for me because it will be one of the ways to monetize the game without ruining any gameplay. Now even though the character picking works, they're slightly different sizes as you can see, so consequently this made the view models on the other characters look a bit out of place. 
Luckily, I realized that I can just give each character its own view model script and adjust the position individually. It definitely didn't take me two hours to finish it. Now that that's done, a few of you also asked me to fix the lighting. I was going to do this when the game's almost done, but you guys are really not patient. I'm just joking, don't get angry. As you can see, it's pretty bad. So I simply changed a few lighting properties, and here's what it looks like now. Just keep in mind, this is definitely not the finished lighting. It's just an improvement. Now that that's done with, I needed to redraw the roads. The roads you've seen in previous devlogs are all gone now, as I made some terrain changes off camera. This only took about 10 minutes, as it's just simple terrain painting. These won't even be the finished roads, they're just guidelines so I know where to put the buildings. Around now, I got the bright idea to make a cosmetic shop to add even more diversity to the characters. This will also give players more stuff to buy with their cash. Firstly, I got some inspiration from other games, that I mixed it with some of the current SCP GUI to make this character customization GUI. Remember, this isn't the finished GUI and I will continuously make changes. After doing some scripting magic for almost two hours, I made the GUI somewhat functional. Now there's a preview of your character and two different store tabs. One will be for cosmetics to buy with cash, and the other will be for cosmetics to buy with Robux. This is a great non-pay to win way to monetize the game. Now as you can see, I actually need to get some cosmetic models. Firstly, I just wanted to get a model for testing, so I headed over to Sketchfab and I found a nice cowboy hat model. Since I'm using skinned meshes, I had to import the model into Blender and then add a bone. This was pretty boring, but still very easy to do. After that, I imported it into Ro uh after that, I imported it into Roblox, then I added it to the shop items. After some coding magic, I added a dressing room tab and made the whole thing functional. This took ages to do, but it was worth it. All I had to do was get the GUI Ask Mango Dev to release my family. And that's it. Before I show you the finished functionality, I first want to build the actual cosmetic shop and import a shopkeeper character. As usual, I headed over to Sketchfab and looked for a decent model for the cosmetic shopkeeper. After a while of searching, I found this one. It fits the style of the current characters, so I rigged it in Mixamo, then imported it into Roblox. Now I had to build the actual cosmetic shop. Firstly, I just made a flat part for the floor to get an idea of how big the cosmetic shop will be. After that, I added a front desk, some shelves, and some crates in the corner. Now, I'm not the best architect, so I asked my Discord server how I can improve the cosmetic shop. After literally 10 minutes, I had a bunch of good suggestions and made this. I can always add more to it in the future. Now all I had to do was simply move the proximity prompt to the shopkeeper, and tween the camera to the displayed items on the shelf. I ran into a few problems here, but it is very boring to explain, so here's the finished product. Finally, if you watched Devlog 3, you'd know that the Chaos Insurgent needs his own building, away from the Class D area. After a bit of thought, I decided that the door to it should be in a small, somewhat hidden cove. This is because the Chaos Insurgency are hiding from the SCP facility staff. I built the entrance, which looks a bit dodgy, so I then added smoke to the entrance to give it a darkness effect. This looks really good. After asking you guys for build inspiration, I decided that at first, the Chaos Insurgency area will just have one main room, then two smaller rooms attached to it. One of the smaller rooms will have the Mission Chaos Insurgent in it, and the other room will have the Mission Manager on the TV. Here's the finished and functioning Chaos Insurgency area. Whoa, whoa. Rick Astley? He just disappeared, what? Uh, okay. Here's the Chaos Insurgent, just sitting in his room.
And in this room is the Mission Manager TV with the spinning Chaos Insurgency logo on it. In my opinion, it looks pretty cool. I think that's enough for this video. If you have any suggestions or want more frequent sneak peeks for the game, then join the Discord. The link is in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons for directly supporting me throughout this game development. Also, if you haven't seen Mango Dev's most recent video, please check it out. We hosted a game jam together and made a football tycoon game together. The game's link will be in the description. Just keep in mind that it is pretty new, so it may be a bit buggy. I'm currently at school from Monday to Saturday, so the progress will slow down for a little while. Next video, I'm planning to just polish the mission system up, add some map improvements, and implement your suggestions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.